everyone, Misha here, and today I am excited to introduce you to my friend Pawpaw. So this is a pawpaw plant. Now here in Florida, if you've, if you've heard of pawpaw, you might be familiar with the idea of it being a tree. But here in Florida, our pawpaws are pretty small, at least in my area. They get to be anywhere from about three feet high to four or five, maybe a little bit taller depending upon the type but it is in the same family as the pawpaw tree that you might be familiar with if you're from a little bit farther north. Pawpaw is in the genus Asimenia or Asimena, and it's in the family of Ananaceae. Now that is the family of a lot of fruits that you might be familiar with as kind of unusual tropical fruits like soursop and custard apple. And you might think, well, hey, does that mean that this fruit is edible? And yep, it sure is. Pawpaw fruit is indeed edible, but for some people there can be a little bit of an allergic reaction from it. You can even get a little bit of contact dermatitis from just touching the leaves. So if you happen to get a chance to try pawpaw, you'd want to take like maybe a tiny bite first and wait a little bit and make sure that you are okay before you continue to eat it. Here in Southwest Florida, most of our pawpaws like to grow in sandy areas. So here you will find it growing on the fringes of the scrub or in the scrub or around our palmetto flat woods like you see here. It's currently in flower. It is early March to late February when we see this beauty bloom. And you can recognize it because of these characteristic white to green flowers, at least this particular species, which is most likely Asmina reticulata, the netted pawpaw. Probably the easiest way to identify the pawpaw is by these beautiful flowers. They are fairly large, about the size of a quarter or even all the way up to the palm of your hand, and they have six petals. Three of them are outer petals that are long, oblong in shape and drooping, and then the other three are pointed and tend to um, connect in the center almost in a little point. They are cream to white or even almost a yellow-green in color, and the central petals can have almost a little bit of purple or pink at the edges of them as well. The pawpaw is deciduous, which means it loses its foliage in the colder winter months here in Florida, and you'll usually find it blooming before very many of the leaves emerge. So a lot of times you'll find these flowers coming out from what looks like woody sticks sticking out of the ground, and it might have a few small little leaves here and there, but again, the flowers are the best way to identify it. So when it's not in bloom, you'll be looking for leaves that are oblong or elliptical, sort of oval in shape. They, to me, feel kind of leathery. Younger leaves sometimes can have some orange hairs on them, but as the plant matures, you won't really see much of that. So you're looking for these bright green leaves that look thick and leathery, and they also tend to have a netted appearance on their leaves as well. The leaves are alternate, so they are arranged in spaces down the branches, and the plant itself has a tendency to look really woody. So I usually recognize it as being a low shrub that just looks like kind of like it's it's almost, they always look sort of old to me, like they're old woody shrubs that have been there for a while. It has a very characteristic look, and once you see them, especially if you catch them in bloom and then come back later, you will always be able to recognize them because they just have this kind of tough look for um, such a small plant. Here in Florida, the pawpaw is a host plant for the zebra swallowtail and the pawpaw sphinx butterfly but it also has uses for a variety of other purposes as well beyond being food for native wildlife. Cordage made from the inner bark of the pawpaw was used to create fishing nets and rope. And in Ozark folklore, the wood of the tree was used as a protection against witches. This plant is still known in modern pharmaceuticals as a treatment for lice because the bark contains a natural insecticide. The seeds of the pawpaw are known to induce vomiting. This plant is considered to be a vermifuge, so it is great at getting rid of worms and all sorts of critters, hence its use for lice. It's also diuretic and the seeds are emetic. It is considered to be cytotoxic and anti-cancer, and there's actually research going back as far as the mid-1980s looking at the seeds as a possible anti-cancer medicine.
In particular, it's believed that this plant may have chemical action against cancer cells that don't respond to chemo, especially lung and breast cancers as well. During the summer, the pawpaw can be spotted by its weird kind of oddly shaped oblong fruit. These are typically referred to as berries, and you will commonly find them growing in clusters. They're about four to five inches long, and they are bright green to yellow green in color. Pawpaw is really an amazing fruit. And it's important to understand that this plant has a culinary history that most of us as Americans are not aware of. Lewis and Clark depended upon them as they moved west in their travels. And they were a fruit that was very much celebrated by our indigenous people as well as the enslaved people. And a lot of culinary historians believe that because of their association with different groups of people that are traditionally marginalized, that is one of the reasons why they fell out of favor as being a more widely available fruit. Pawpaws are our largest native North American fruit, and they were so popular at one time that chilled pawpaw was a favorite fruit of George Washington. Unfortunately, they are notoriously hard to store, and they don't ship very well either. So these are some of the other reasons why it's a little bit tough to find these in your local grocery. Fruit of the pawpaw is quite tasty, and it has sort of a custardy sweet paste. It has three times the vitamin C as apple and two times as much as banana, and it's also high in vitamin A and protein as well. The fruit could be eaten raw or used in pie filling and baked, and it was quite popular for a number of years. These days, though, it's very hard to find, and between the fact that it's hard to keep and transport and also some of the negative associations it had as being a food of the people that were traditionally considered to be poor, we don't really see it as much. However, it's really important to understand that this was a plant that helped our early explorers navigate through the United States, and it also was so well known by the indigenous people that it was one of their most widely cultivated fruit plants. So while we may not know it today, it has a long history of supporting humans in North America.